Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video we're going to be solving two mechanics problems. So, so this problem is from center of mass and NLM you could say and the next problem is from collisions and rotational motion. So the first problem says that we have a cube of mass m and side length of 4r has a groove made inside in the vertical plane, inside in it, in a vertical plane. The groove is a circle having a radius of r, a particle of mass m moving down with an initial velocity of root 2gr. Now the question is as you, all the surfaces are smooth, we have to talk about these particular options. Okay, so give this problem a try guys and after that check out the solution. Okay, so the first thing we need to notice in this problem is that as the ball uh, starts moving down, uh, it's going to push on this cube which and therefore the cube will have some acceleration, let's call it A, with respect to the ground. So now let's try, you know observe the ball from close. Now relative to the cube's frame of reference, we know that the ball is going to be moving in this circular path, right? So it'll have two acceleration components. Again, we are talking relative to cube's frame, okay? so one acceleration component is going to be v squared divided by r and v is given to be root 2g r so so this comes out to be 2g this is to maintain the circular motion of the ball and the second is if you observe in the vertical direction the only force acting on the ball is mg which means the, there will be a vertical acceleration of g as well uh, in the downward direction now with respect to ground frame we have to add back this acceleration a uh, now we are going to use the concept of center of mass so we know that if i take the entire thing as a system we can see that there is no horizontal forces acting on the system yes there will be vertical forces we don't care about the y-axis in the x-axis net force is zero which means the acceleration of the center of mass is zero which means we can write m1 a1 plus m2 a2 equal zero let's take the right direction as positive so let's say first if we write the contribution due to the cube it will have a minus ma component I'm, I'm taking the right direction to be positive ball will have an m times 2g minus a component towards the right and this should equate to zero which means a comes out to be equal to g now let's check out the option so uh, in option c they're saying the acceleration of the block with respect to ground is g so that is correct so that is correct because a came out to be g now the acceleration of the particle with respect to ground so so as we can see 2g minus g is going to be g then we already have a g here so the acceleration with respect to ground yes it is g root 2 so d option is also correct now the next question is the normal reaction on the cube by the ground and this will also be correct because the only vertical force acting on the cube if you observe is the the weight of the cube mg would be equal to the normal from the ground n so option b is also correct now in option a they're saying the normal reaction on the particle is mg so okay so the normal reaction on this ball is going to be in this particular direction let's just mark it over here so from here we can see that n equals m into g so option a is also correct okay so now let's move on to the next question. So in this question, we have a sphere whose radius is five centimeters and it is rolling without slipping with a velocity of 10 meter per second on two parallel horizontal fixed rods, okay? So, so from the side view, this is going to look something like this. So this is going to be rod one, this is going to be rod two and the sphere is going moving into the plane, okay? So this is how the diagram is looking like and the separation between these two rods uh, is given to be L and it's given that there is friction between the rods and the sphere and the coefficient of friction is 0.3. The sphere collides with a smooth vertical wall elastically so the collision with the wall is elastic and, and they're saying that after the collision it, it comes back and again collides with the wall with a velocity v2. So uh, the situation is going to be something like this. So after hitting the velocity is going to reverse and the sphere is again going to come back and hit the wall with a velocity of v2. And then they're saying again it comes back and collides with the wall with a velocity of v3. So we are required to find the value of v2 and v3. So now let's begin with the analysis. Okay guys, so this is how the situation is looking like. Just before the collision, the ball is moving towards the wall with a velocity of v0. And now as it is given that E equals one, again, the ball is also smooth. So there, there won't be any friction acting on the ball. There won't be any impulsive friction acting on the ball that's going to change its omega. So its omega is going to remain fixed, but as E is one, the separation velocity is going to be the same as the approach velocity, which means just after collision, the only thing that's going to change is that this V naught will reverse its direction. Okay guys, so now if you observe the situation from the side view, these are the two supports uh, that are holding the sphere. And let's call this distance as smaller. And uh, this distance over here is going to be L by two, which is square root of 24 centimeters. And R is given to be 25 centimeters. So from here, R is simply one centimeter. So now, as you guys can see, the sphere is about to slip on this particular rod over here because it's going to have some relative velocity, right? So it, its velocity is going to be, is going to be V naught plus omega naught times R. And it's, it's going to slip. Kinetic friction will start acting towards the right in order to prevent slipping. Okay, and finally what will happen is that 
if you observe the center what's going to happen is it's going to be decelerated and at some point it's going to come to rest and then it is going to accelerate and at some point over here it's going to start rolling the rolling velocity is actually given to be v2 and this velocity in the question they mentioned is that it has v2 so it returns again and collides with a wall with v2 okay guys so now the question is how do we know that this sphere achieves velocity v2 before colliding with the wall like why can't the sphere be still slipping uh, as it is coming back and colliding with the wall again and the answer is if you observe the center it's being decelerated it becomes zero somewhere over here and it gets accelerated to v2 now clearly we know that v2 will be less than v0 right um, and the reason for that is there are energy losses due to kinetic friction so v2 is clearly going to be less than v0 so the time it takes for v0 to go to zero is more than the time it takes to go from zero to v2 so clearly it achieves a velocity of v2 before colliding with the wall so okay so that's the explanation for that so now the thing is uh, it will also have some omega call it omega 2 and omega 2 we can easily determine right so if you observe the point of contact uh, over here i'm talking about this contact point over here it will have a linear velocity component which is v0 and due to the omega it is going to be omega cross r if you guys remember so the omega vector is in this direction r vector is in this direction so if you do omega cross r it will in magnitude come out to be omega into small r right because uh, omega cross r the sine theta component is simply going to be smaller this component over here comes out to be omega naught times smaller so from here we get the uh, condition for rolling as v naught equals omega naught times smaller okay guys so now the thing is we have to conserve angular momentum and this is the kind of tricky part in this problem like which point to choose to conserve angular momentum the thing you need to keep in mind is if you if you choose the center of mass then angular momentum is not conserved because as you can see uh, friction force kinetic friction force is clearly providing some torque about the center of mass the normals are going to pass through the center the mg is also going to pass through the center but friction force will provide some torque and hence as a result some angular impulse which you have to take into account and if you're taking that into account there is going to be a time factor that comes into it and then it's a, it's going to be a mess so in your calculations there, there is going to be time involved but if you choose the right point you can actually exclude the discussion of time from this problem and uh, that particular point i want you to pay close attention to okay so let's say uh, so i am looking at it from a side view assume that this is the center of the sphere okay and these are the two rails so if you observe something uh, if i take this particular point over here that that lies along the midpoint between these two rails okay so i am talking about this particular point let's call this point as some o point o this is the point that we will be choosing and now the reason for that is kinetic friction guys if you observe is going to act along this rod let's call it fk and act along this rod as well fk now this the torque of this fk above the center is going to be fk multiplied by this distance you know extrapolate this back to our point o about the point o as you can see the torque of fk simply cancels out it's going to be fk into d minus fk into d so the torque of kinetic friction just cancels out now what's left is the normal and the mg so the normal reaction will have vertical components let's call it ny similarly ny will act on the other rail as well and then we also have the weight mg two n n components ny ny and then we also have mg so guys we know that two ny is actually equal to mg right if you if you observe it over here two ny will be in this direction and mg will be in this direction so as you can see their net torque about the point o will also cancel out so the net torque about the point o comes out to be zero in this particular case and hence we can conserve the angular momentum of the system about the point o okay so going back to our original picture so let's just take the direction going into the plane as k cap so let's first write down the initial angular momentum of the system about the point o so again if you guys uh, don't remember how do we write the angular momentum it is angular momentum of the center of mass uh, this term is treating the cm as a particle and then we have angular momentum of the body let's call the body as a about the center of mass okay so this is how we uh, write the angular momentum about a point o so now angular momentum of the center of mass this so this is the initial condition so as you can see it is simply going to be m v not multiplied by r about the point o so m v not r and what is the direction so if you do r cross v the direction will come out of the plane which is negative k cap right so so minus m v not r in the k cap direction and if you observe something icm omega is into the plane if you curl your fingers plus 2 by 5 mr squared omega not which is actually simply v not by r so now we can write down the final angular momentum so the final angular momentum is uh, both of the directions are simply into the plane li equals lf and substituting the values of r 
we'll get V2 as 9 by 11 V0, which comes out to be numerically 8.18 meters per second. Okay. Okay, guys. So now the only change is that now this ball has a velocity of V2 and uh, rotating with an angular velocity of omega 2, and it's colliding with the wall. And again, now the direction reverses, and this is V2. And same exact same cycle repeats again. And again, after rolling begins, this velocity becomes V3, and it starts rolling with some angular velocity of omega 3. So uh, this is exactly the same calculation. So V3 will in this case just come out to be uh, 9 by 11, which is a factor we obtained obtained earlier times v2 so this comes out to be 9 by 11 times 8.18 which comes out to be 6.69 meters per second so that was the solution to this problem guys so if you have any doubts you can comment down below if you enjoy the video please do like share and subscribe and that's it thanks for watching